Kevin here with Golden Fly Shop. We're on the banks of the Roaring Fork. Welcome to Streamside Flies. So this is gonna be a variation on a pheasant tail using a brown mottled bead. A little less flash, a little more natural coloration. The hook I'm using is a Tiemco 3761. Uh, long shank, fairly stout wire, so it's not gonna bend out as quick as uh, something with only a standard size wire. First thing I'm gonna do is lay down a short amount of thread and throw in my pheasant tail. Best way to keep this on top is to start with a loose thread wrap and then gain tension as you go over the hook. That'll keep it from sliding around. I'm gonna save this clump for later. Come all the way back to the bend in the hook. Take that clump we just removed. And make sure your tips are all lined up. And take my wire. I like to add this to the back so I don't build up bulk in the body of the fly and we can still have a narrow profile. I'm going to take that clump of pheasant tail I was using, attach it to the rear, and just one wrap. I like to throw this on at a 45 to make it easier to tie it. So I have two jaws for this vise. These vices are awesome because they have a large variety of jaws you can use. This jaw is really intended for anything between about a 12 to a 6 aught. Um, this is a 14, so we're challenging ourselves today. I'm going to use the rotary function on my vise. If your vise doesn't have this, you can just twist it up. No need to take that all the way up to the bead because that's where a thorax is going to be. Now with my wire, I'm going to reverse wrap in the opposite direction. I wrapped my pheasant tail just to increase durability. For this, I usually just do it by hand. You can still use the rotary function on your vise. Just want to make sure your spacing is fairly even. Secure with two wraps behind, a few wraps in front, and then I'm gonna helicopter my wire to break it off. Now, you can use your old clump of pheasant tails if you still have enough. For the ease of this fly, I'm gonna take a fresh batch of fibers. I usually take about, mm, for a fly this size, eight to 10. You want an even number so you can divide it evenly on either side of your fly. Once I have that, I'm gonna take two to three strands of peacock curl, just depending on the size. For now, I'm gonna take three. So I'm just gonna start spinning my hurl so that the quill reinforces everything. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that. Give yourself a little more thread on the end if you need. 
I like to add a little bit of bulk right behind the bead to keep it from sliding. I'm gonna go ahead and secure, again, two wraps behind and a few in front as well. Usually now you can snap off your hurl. If it doesn't break perfectly, go ahead and clean it up. Now for the legs and the wing case of this fly. After we have the thorax, we're gonna bring our pheasant tails to the front and create a wing case. Secure that with a couple of wraps at the top. This is a very standard way of creating mayfly legs and wing cases. If you're ever tying any other flies, you probably recognize this process. I'm gonna pull back aside after I've split them into two equal groups, and I'm not counting. Um, you know, your eye's a powerful tool, so just make sure they look even. We're gonna take one wrap to secure and separate those tails. On, I like to start with my far side. Um, that's just a personal preference. I don't think it really makes a difference. And then I'll bring the near side back. Now, the less room you give yourself on these pheasant tails, the more you're gonna have to finagle them at the end here. Um, the longer a fiber you use, the easier it is to tie in. Um, I think the less realistic the taper of the fiber looks though. So once we have those separated and split to the sides, I'm just gonna kind of pull those tails around where I want them. Again, doesn't make a whole lot of difference to the fish. And clean this up a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my whip finish tool, throw two quick whip finishes behind my bead. I usually just throw three reps, make sure everything's seated. One more. Here on your thread, I like using this whip finisher because it has a tool on the tip that allows you to easily pop the thread. Keeps your scissors nice and sharp. There's one less cut you need to add to the life of your scissor. Now, last part of this fly is cutting the leg to an appropriate size. What I like to do is go right behind my peacock curl thorax, take my tails together, and give it a nice even snip. Some of those will escape. So just clean it up and then bring those fibers back to the side where they belong. 